Awesome. I'm Matt Minton, and I'm with Geek Vibes Nation today. Hi, Matt. Hi, super nice to meet you, Austin. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's really an honor to meet you. And I've really been a big fan of yours ever since Booksmart. Um, so I was really excited to hear when you were uh, casting this film. Um, I'm curious, like, how does it feel to now have this project um, finally being seen by audiences? It feels so good. Um, with the strike and everything, it, it got postponed and postponed and postponed the release. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just feels really good to have everyone finally see all the work that's been put into it. And I hope that people feel like they can relate to it and feel healed from it in their own life and have fun watching it. Yeah, absolutely. And what was the experience like being at South by Southwest and having the film premiere there? I love South by Southwest. That was my second time being at South by Southwest because the first time that I was at South by, South by was book smart um so this is just it, it was like a full it felt like a full circle moment i got to have the most incredible barbecue everybody raves about terry black's barbecue in austin so i had to stop by and get myself some terry blacks it was the best brisket i've ever actually had in my entire life and uh, the banana pudding don't sleep on the banana pudding if y'all go to terry blacks it's so good um and it was just incredible South by Southwest, I have to go back, like yearly basis at this point, I have to go back. Yeah, it's on my bucket list to visit one day, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and you know, <laughs> yeah, and you know, the story behind this film is so compelling and I think speaks to the way that music can reach and touch people at pivotal moments in their lives, especially, you know, at times when we least expect it. And so as a singer and songwriter yourself, in addition to being an actor, what was it like being a part of a film where music plays such a significant part you know, music for me is such an emotional communicative medium. And I was so happy that I got an opportunity to be in a film that merges the, the two so seamlessly, um, especially it being a integral part of Harriet's, Lucy Boynton's character's experience with grief and with her time travel and how music is taking her back to these places, literally um, in with a loved one. And I was, I was really, really happy to be able to also be a musical character as well, because I play a DJ. Uh, Morris Martin, who um, with Harriet is an engineer, a, a, an audiophile, and gets to um, help Harriet get through some of this grief uh, while, you know, pursuing his own dreams and making sure that he's going to his parties and getting, you know, his fun in. And he can kind of allow Harriet to experience some of the light that he's making in the world while she's going through her madness. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's the bomb that you form with Lucy's character, Harriet, feels so natural. And I really felt like that was the heart of the film. How did you and Lucy approach um, building this relationship together? Building my relationship with Lucy was so easy. You always wonder how the person that you're gonna be working with is going to approach their process. Are they, you know, these method actors that go into this really deep, dark place and can't talk to you? She, from the jump, was so open, so warm. It felt so um, natural to work with her um, in that capacity. I mean, I think, I think the first time that I, uh, the first time that I worked with her on set was this scene where Morris is accepting her into his apartment and they're talking about the episode that she just had. Um, and while I'd met her previously, just because, you know, we meet, we talk, we rehearse it a little bit. It was the manifestation of all of our meetings and it just felt so good. And we, I start talk, talking to her about my, childhood and my life and she's telling me stuff about her and her time in Britain which I mean I'm, I'm not really versed in UK culture just yet even though I have spent some time in London I'm gonna be back soon but um yeah she's just a wonder and she's great and it was so natural so easy
yeah, it really did feel natural as a viewer. Um, and there's so many, there's just so many moments and lines that you deliver with so much heart. Uh, for example, the line, you lost yourself when you lost him. There's just so many moments that I think you really bring to life so beautifully. Are there any moments that, you know, looking back on now um, after rapping that really stick with you? Mm. You know, so <laughs> this might seem a little like superficial or whatever, but one of the moments that really stuck with me was the, mo the moment where I'm sitting with Harriet on the back of the car that, that I dragged the speakers onto. And I'm like, you need to give David a chance and stop playing. You basically need to stop playing because that day Nelly Furtado showed up on set. And <laughs> I just remember so starkly we were all like, Nelly Furtado's coming, Nelly Furtado's coming. And so I made sure that I stayed. After I wrapped that day, I made sure that I stayed. And um, at the end, she has a cameo where they're in the studio and Harriet's finally getting back into her music, her old music self, engineering, and she engineers Nelly's record. And I was definitely in the studio for that. I took my picture. I was they played and they play music in the background to um, have us rock to so that we're not just dancing to nothing. And one of the songs, of course, was the song that you hear in the movie, which is a new Nelly Furtado record that she had um, in the vault. But Ned threw on and I was with her manager in Video Village singing it word for word, singing Promiscuous Girl, word for word for word for word. Um, she'll forever be an icon. So that was a big day for me. Yeah, I could, I would be doing the same thing in the studio, just listening and singing along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm curious, to, kind of, um, you know, with music playing such an integral part of the film, are there any songs that you discovered through the making of this film? Um, I definitely discovered Roxy Music Turn You On. That was like mm -hmm. an incredible song. Um, the Jamie XX record, um, I that was such a good um, discovery. And honestly, there were a lot, 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 lot more discoveries that were made because Ned created a playlist, like a comprehensive mm -hmm. character playlist for everybody's character and sent it to them. And when I tell you that thing was like 50 plus songs, it was so long and I would just have it on spin while I was memorizing my lines, while I was reading the script um, because we got the playlist pretty early. He had planned it out very um, early on. Artists that I can't even pronounce their, their artists, a lot of German artists, a lot of synthesis in house and um, disco. So uh, yeah, a lot of music discovery was made and I still have the Morris playlist in my Apple music. Um, and, I, and I put it on from time to time, so yeah. Yeah, I, lo I love the playlist idea of like getting into character and just, you know, really getting to dive in. Yeah, it, it's a great way to get into character and a great way to like kind of put yourself in the environment of what's going on. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm curious, like, has music been something you used before, like in previous roles to get into character or was it really this was like the first time? Um, yes, I would say music is really the main source of my energy depending on what music I'm listening to that day, it will create my psyche for whatever I'm doing. So for They Slash Them, uh, which was also a Blumhouse Hulu collab, um, I was listening to, for, for some of the most more emotional scenes, I was listening to a lot of melancholy music, slow jams to get myself in that vibe. For Daybreak, I was listening to Nav. I was listening to Gunna, Future, um, and a lot of the Atlanta trap greats to build myself up because I had to play a bully. I had to play a warrior. And you wasn't supposed to know that I was gay until like episode four. So I was just hardening myself up, being an athlete. Um, and, 
yeah, music music is integral to me in creating that atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice that you know you were able to bring that in such such an integral way with this film. You know, being so much about music and having such a big role in the story. So I can imagine how how awesome that must have been. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a chance if there's anything else uh, you wanted to say about the film or just anything else you you want people to know as they watch it. Um, I would say it is definitely a place where you can go to, you know, gain healing. If you are, you know, if you are going through a transition with a loved one or you don't really know how to get through a certain moment in your life or a season of your life. It's a feel good movie. It speaks to a lot of different types of people, a lot of genres of music. And it's a nice feel good moment. It's giving rom-com, it's giving all the things. And I can't wait for, for everybody to see it. So yeah, run to Hulu and watch it. Yeah, yeah, I we definitely need, you know, I feel like we always see feel good movies now. So uh, um, more than ever. Pandemic, especially after that pandemic, mm. we need it. And you yeah. know, if anybody likes a little queer vibe, I got you on that. As soon as you turn yes. it on. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, once again, thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you today. And just for those tuning in, as a reminder, The Greatest Hits is currently playing in limited theaters and streaming on Hulu. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah.